For more than 250 years, this has been Halifax's toilet. Raw sewage, among other things, dumped straight in here. When I first started to study the harbor, I thought, well, it's going to be boring. This is a polluted harbor with smelly sediments, and that's about it. And it was nothing like that whatsoever. When we finished the whole project, we said, wow, what a chunk of history we were able to bring forward from these, these studies. So if you look down here, this is George's Island in the middle of the harbor, and there's actually a little shipwreck on the side. And that one is called the Governor Cornwallis. And it was a ferry boat that caught fire as it was going to Dartmouth, and they towed it out here, burned, and sank to the seabed. And if you run your finger over here, I can actually feel some of these features on the seafloor because they stick up above the bottom. They're actually topographic features on the map. There were two bridges built in Halifax Harbor in the 1880s and 1890s. They both fell down. And if you look really closely, you can see a line. You see this line right oh, here? Yeah. That's the remains of the first and second bridge that went between Halifax and Dartmouth. And the spectacular thing was, it was the shortest distance across the entire harbor. So the engineers that did this in that time, they were able to put they it knew. in. They knew yeah. their work was that good. Now the Halifax explosion site is right in here. We spent a long time trying to figure this out mm -hmm. because there were various documents that talked about it. And they even said that the bottom of the harbor had a big hole blown in it. Well, it doesn't. Because the ship that blew up, the Mont Blanc, was grounded and the explosion really was up and out. It was on the bottom, right? So everything went up and out. Um, but we did spend a lot of time and we actually found where we think Ground Zero was and it's right in here the remains of Pier 6 that it was tied up against our, or it actually hit, and uh, our, that remains is, is still there. The model probably came out in uh, the late 90s or so, but the current technology is not much different than how you would make one of those things today. And it's quite, it's quite interesting because not only are we measuring the water depth and we have the uh, aerial photos of the land, we have the topography and the bathymetry, which is the depths of water on it, but we also have it shaded with an artificial sun. It's a powerful tool that integrates all of the processes that have taken place on that bottom of the harbor. If you're an engineer and you're going to lay a cable, build a new wharf, uh, dredge an area, make it deeper, uh, do all kinds of experiments out there and use it as a test site, you really need to know the features that are down there and how it formed and what its characteristics are. And so, you know, you can look at this, that model in about five minutes. It's sort of equivalent to reading 50 pages of a text, but you can, you can end up with a very good understanding of the seafloor, its processes, and what kind of problems you're likely to encounter in, in any project. We need this for every harbor in Canada. We need to have an understanding because you can't manage it if you don't understand it.